always been like helping people try to understand science, understand math. Um, so um, I love experiments. I really, really, really like experiments. And now I have a son. Um, so you guys know this is like man, this is woman. Man's up here, woman's down here. So I can say like my husband, my wife, my son, my daughter. So I have one kid, my son. And when he was born, that was going to be my first real long-term uh, science experiment that I was going to do. I was going to experiment on my son from birth. So the first experiment I did, I did two experiments, two main experiments with my son. Uh, one experiment was I never, never reacted to when he got hurt. And I told my wife, I told her, when he gets hurt, don't react. And let's see how strong he come, becomes. And he is really strong. He will like fall down and just smash his face and get up and be like, uh, uh, oh, oh, I hurt my face. <laughs> and then that's it, you know? And I'm like, oh, well, be careful. You know, be careful. Don't, um, don't smash your face anymore. Um, and then the second experiment that I did together with my son was ASL, um, baby sign language. So I heard that um, basically, you know, the brain, brain scientists know that people understand, okay, you understand how to communicate from a very, very, very early age, way before you can control your voice and you can control your tongue and you can speak. I think this is part of where the whole terrible twos comes from. Because when kids are two years old, they understand a lot, but they can't really say much. So that's why I taught my son sign language. And I started noticing these games, these games, these deaf games, um, every day. Some new deaf game. And so I thought, I just want to keep doing this and see how far we can take it. So around the time he was like two years old, he was really pushing my, uh, the limits of my patience. And I noticed I started kind of raising my voice. And I thought, uh, this isn't good, right? Because now I'm modeling behavior that I don't want him to follow. I don't want him to raise his voice when he gets mad, when he gets frustrated. So uh, what I started doing was, when I got mad, I would turn my voice off. You know, you stop right now, I'm serious, you know. I'd be like, that, that thing is dirty. That is dirty. Get out of your mouth. I mean that right now. I'm serious. Stop it. And I noticed this was cool because I would be at like a party and people would say, oh, it's so quiet. And I was like, it happened twice. I was at a party and some adults were like, oh, it's so nice and quiet. And I was <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I guess it was. You guys couldn't hear me yelling at my son the whole night, like, stop it, stop it, get down, don't, you know. Um, so, so anyway, that's, that's why I kept doing this. So, um, uh, so anyway, I was really, really excited, right? super, super excited when I heard that you guys might use some ASL in your uh, science club. And I thought maybe I'd come in and just uh, share a little bit about how ASL works um, and the benefits that I think you might have if you actually try uh, to learn a little bit of ASL. Um, I thought I wanted to start by just showing a video clip from a show called Three Deaf Eyes. You can see it's a PBS documentary. And this guy, uh, a friend of mine named CJ Jones, I thought you might enjoy this. He said, I was driving down the street. Beautiful day. All the birds were flying. <laughs> And all the birds were thinking, <laughs> and all the birds were thinking, hey, you, <laughs> I got you, there. All of a sudden, I look at the wheel for a meal. The guy behind me was so angry. <laughs> hey, you, what are you, deaf, huh? <laughs> wow, that makes me angry. Of course, I'm deaf and proud. So I step on the guy. <laughs> 
by the way, I have a merge status, 500 ACO. I wish I did. Thank you very much. Finally, I caught up with that car. <laughs> Automatic window. <laughs> hey, you! What are you hearing? Huh? <laughs> yeah. What are you hearing? Right. He's like, what, what are, are you deaf? And he like caught up Can't with the guy and said, Yeah, of course I'm deaf. What are you hearing? <laughs> right? So he's like a. He's a deaf actor, and uh, it was funny. I was down at the uh, at a Griffin Griff Park. Um, yeah, where they had like the merry-go-round. Is that right? Yeah, the, and um, riding on the train with my son. And uh, I had just got done watching this. My son was about two, so he was doing a lot of signing, but um, not speaking very much. And uh, I look over, and I'm like, I think that's C.J. Jones. And I was like, Are you deaf? And he's like. Yeah. Do you do you know who I am? And I'm like, oh my God, you're CJ Jones. And so we had this really nice, like, long, like, conversation. And uh, he's like, he's he's really uh, good at uh, reading lips. Um, but reading lips is really hard. And so um, you know, sometimes when you meet a deaf person, you're like, oh, can you read lips? You know, and they're like, yeah. But it's actually you, you miss a lot. You know, so you know, when you meet a deaf person, you talk normally. You don't if you slow down or overemphasize your, your words, it becomes even harder. So you talk normal, but, um, but yeah, by using you know, what sign language I knew and his reading lips, it was actually, uh, we had a really, really wonderful like, long conversation. And um, he taught me a little bit about like, deaf culture. And so if you guys want to um, you know, learn more about it, I mean, this is how I learned. I, I found this one book in like, the Caltech library. And of course, if you find like, a sign language book in the Caltech library, it's like, like just like way overkill. And that's how I learned about um, that's how I learned about Stokey, and then I bought this Gallaudet uh, dictionary, which I found was also a useful way for me to try to um, learn Japanese words at the same time. So here's like the Stokey notation. Um, so be up, you know, over with contact, so you can decipher the code. Um, and then actually, I met this professor who's actually trying to develop a writing. Um, before, when people thought, oh, but I don't think like ASL is a real language, you know, they can't write it. And they were like, yeah, well, you know how many languages there are in the world that can't be written? There's a lot of them, actually. So they're like, that's really not valid. Um, but there are a lot of benefits to being able to write a language. So, you know, here, if you understand this, you can understand this as American sign you know, language. So this is a really interesting, and then, you know, this is like a profile, like, you know. Um, so anyway, so it's a really interesting thing that's like, yeah, it's like characters, and it's like really, really kind of beautiful, like this guy went to Gallaudet, um, he got his um, PhD there, and he's a professor at, at CSUN, or at, um, uh, I misspoke, um, you'll see him in a second, he's in, in later on in my, in my presentation, um, but yeah, it's very interesting, and he, he's, um, yeah, so you can see that this is like, you know, book, right? kind of book um, but it's easy to write, and um, other things, if you guys want to like just kind of like pick up some sign language, um, you guys know the show Switch to Birth. Um, so when I saw CJ Jones, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm trying to learn sign language. I learned, you know, there's this show, Changed uh, Birth, and he's like, oh yeah. And I was like, oh, is this the sign? This is like the sign for like babies are switched, you know. So that's what that's what deaf people say. They're like, oh yeah, 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 I know that show. Like yeah, Switch to Birth. So um, if you watch this show from the very beginning, you learn about how these these two girls were switched, and then they find out about you know, um, their real parents, and, and she got meningitis um, when she was a kid, and so she's, she's deaf, and so you kind of, if you watch it from the beginning on Netflix or whatever, Hulu, then you can actually kind of relive the experience of her family, like learning uh, how to sign, you know, so they're like, oh, it's nice to meet you, and like their signing is like really bad, and a lot of people criticize this because they're like, yeah, they're like, it's not real ASL, but like there is like Marley Matlin, I forget how you say her yeah. name, but she's on the show. So I mean there are a few characters. Oh wow, really? Wow. Her daughter, I went to school with Whoa, cool. Whoa, connections. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, so um so there are some real uh, deaf characters on the show. And then there's other people that are using more like ESL, you know, the signed English. Um, but, so because ASL is a real language, um, grammar is different, syntax is different, 
I'll talk a little bit about that later. But like, um, you don't say like the uh, you don't say like the black the black truck. You know, you say like the truck black. Yeah. So you do things in that order, and it might make sense why a a visual language might be one that's more topic oriented. So. English is more of like a subject, subject, object, you know, whatever, verb, SOB. There's SVOs, there's VSOs, there's VOSs, there's every sort of arrangement. And in sign language, you can do many arrangements, and different arrangements end up referring to sort of a sound or look like uh, active voice versus passive voice. But you can't do every variation. So some variations, they've done tests. They've done like, you know, tests, experiments with deaf people. And they do like, you know, they change the word order, and then sometimes, the deaf person's like, I don't know what that was, you know. So, yeah. So that's what. So, I thought, oh yeah, when I learned uh, ASL, I thought, oh, right now, I'm doing it at the same time, you know. The the same time I'm talking to you, I'm doing ASL. Well, I'm really signing English, uh, so E S L or English sign language. Um, but. Um, that's kind of like a halfway point where uh, deaf people and hearing people can meet and understand each other. So like standard sign language. Yeah. Kind of like that. Yeah. Like there was a. Arabic. Yeah, exactly. There was like a push before when you would talk. Um, like there was there there've been different pushes in 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 our in, in the, the history of sign language. And at one point, like you'd say like you know I'm you know want versus like wanting, and you would like say want, and then you would throw like an ing, or you would have like different designations for like ed, like past tense and stuff, but that's really not um, like true ASL. So um, so if you look at some old books, you'll see these things, and these are kind of dated. People don't really do this anymore. Um, this is another fun movie that you guys might enjoy watching called The Hammer. It's about this guy, um, and it's really his life before he got into like ultimate sort of MMA fighting or whatever it's called. I don't really watch that, but um, but he was like he won like a, in college. He won like a couple championships for wrestling, and so it's interesting because you know he 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 tries to go to a mainstream college. He ends up going to like a, uh, Rochester Institute for the Deaf and being a great like wrestler. Um, and I think it gives you some insight into what. It's like being deaf. I really like it because in the beginning when he's talking, um, you're like, it shows like words, dash, word, dash, and like, I don't, I'm not getting all the captions. What, what's wrong with the captions? And they're like, that's actually their device to show you what it's like to be deaf when you're relying on reading lips. You're like missing a lot. Um, these are just some, that, that was just, Sign Naturally is a series, if you're like really into sign language. Like I bought the, the first one when I was teaching my kid. And this was the, these are web links. So these are web links that will take you to, I put this in your, um, in your uh, sign language folder. So, um, so th this is what I started off, just, you know, vocabulary. Just vocabulary with my sign language. And, and then like, you know, I was, one day he saw like a horse, and he's like, nay, nay, nay. I'm like, well, that's not really a horse. So I looked up zebra, and guess what zebra is? Striped horse. Striped, striped, striped horse, you know? And the next day, he's like, you know, he's like, you know, I'm like, whoa, like he did it, you know? Like, just like the next day, you know? So let's see how far we can, we can take this. Um, you know, he started grabbing things, and I'm like, okay, you need to share. Okay, you need to share, share. And, uh, and then the next day, he like, was like, and I was like, oh, okay. And then when I see him going to like accost a child, I can be like, Jay! And he's like, you know, and, like, you know. and the, like, the other parents are like, they don't know, right? They're like, oh, your son shares. I'm like, oh, yeah, he's just natural. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and like, oh, yeah, we're just the same, you know? Not true. Not true. That's a lie. So, um,. You know, these other these are some other good um, websites. Handspeak and Signing Savvy are two really really good ones. So I, I link those there. Um, I, I yeah, go ahead. Question. Can I jump in with a question? Yeah, question. This is question. You draw, like draw a question mark. No? I show I show that to like yeah to the elementary school kids. You know. Okay, here that lady's in class now. Yeah. Question. question. How about okay? All right. Well, this is another kind of like what's the question, comment, or yeah. One thing I notice a lot of teachers do is like. Um, is they'll, they'll have people like actually raise their hand, they'll raise it like I for inquiry, C for comment, 
So if you have a question or you have a comment or you have an answer, a, a for answer. Tangent. Tangent. Uh, well, like the thing is like when you kind of like, you know, like you have designations, like this is a designation for car sometimes, you know, so it's like, you know, we're driving, you had a car crash, you know, car, whatever. Um, this is the designation for plane, you know, so we're like flying, whatever. I think like this is like designation for like people, you know, like getting a line or stand. So you could be like, you know, to kind of represent like, okay, off topic, you know, something like that, right? So I can, I don't, I, tangent would be a good word that I should look up because I teach be like calculus and I kind of wonder, yeah. yeah. And sometimes science words are a little bit lacking in ASL. Um, BSL is pretty different. British Sign Language is pretty different from American Sign Language. American Sign Language is much more similar to French because the French uh, teachers were some of the first ones that brought over. Um, oh, and that's why ASL has that modification that comes after the Exactly. Noun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, those, those could be some of the reasons yeah. why. Yeah. Um, so it's very similar to, to so, so BSL is actually very different. Even the alphabet, very different from like uh, ASL. So that's interesting. But they like have, there. yeah, they have more technical words. So it's interesting sometimes when you're trying to think of like the science word, like tangent, to think about like what is the abstract concept that you could like reduce it to yeah. the core idea, right? Like the core idea, because then you can probably. We were thinking like sun, sugar. I looked up um, the, the first was like so. Oh, oh, oh. I see. Yeah, yeah, sun, was, sugar, or something. Yeah, like. it was like, and then that's what it was. Before. Yeah, because like I can imagine like this is like this is like one year or like the, like this is like the world. So you could be like you know like the sun. You know, be like the sun and like fixing or like making. Of, yeah. Or like yeah, coming together. Yeah, so you could come up with like different home home signs. They call yeah. it home. You know why this is the sign for home? You said, um, yeah. Yes or no? That's what yeah. You do. yeah, exactly. Home is where you eat and sleep. So oh, that's why this this became home. Oh, yeah, home. Yes. No. So that was actually my question. Oh, so what I meant to yeah. ask is that um, how does the deaf community look on like people like us who are not deaf? Yeah. Like making up signs. Yeah. You know what I mean? We don't want to be a Right, person. no, I think I think that um I think if you're if you're if you're if you're like um, if you're creating if you're creating signs or like building signs from real signs, I think they would think that was okay. Because like you know it's gonna be like made of like two words, you know, two words that you put together to try to represent some like concept. And I think they'd be okay with that. They'd be just fine, I think, with that. Um uh and then they'd probably say, oh, that's, yeah, that's cool. Actually, this is a real way to say it, you know. Um, but just like making something up that's like not related at all to the <coughs> core idea of the vocabulary, they'd probably be like, well, why don't you just like learn the words or, or, or just fingerspell it. Yeah. Um, this means fingerspelling. And that's like the first thing you should like really learn is like your ABCs. And that was another thing that I did just for fun, just for fun uh, together with my son. I would I would be finger spelling. I would be like, oh yeah, well Jay, you know that's that's a that's a cup, you know. And I would do things like that. And sometimes he was like, Dad, can I see the wench? I'm like, well, yeah, it's it's a wrench, a wrench, you know. And I would try to like emphasize how you say things to try to make this, you know, inside my mouth where you can't see more visual. And uh, I noticed like recently him starting to show signs of like he's three, so now he's three years old. And like yesterday we were at a restaurant and. There was a big bus, and he loves seeing all the city buses. Oh, Dad, look, the city bus. And he goes, oh, what's that? And I was like, that's strange, because it's a city bus. You always say, oh, it's a, I'm like, well, it's a city bus. What do you mean? And he goes, no, what's the, the name? And it was Snoopy and Charlie Brown, and in big capital letters, it said, Peanuts, the movie. And I was like, you know, we're inside the restroom, so I'm like, you know, that means dog. You know, so I told him, what's a dog? And he goes, oh, what's the dog's name? And I was like, oh, that's Snoopy, and that's Charlie Brown. He goes, well, why do they like peanuts? And I was like, well, that's, wait a second. <laughs> you said peanuts. Did I say peanuts? I didn't say peanuts. Did you, you know, I think he just like is recognizing certain letters with this big vocabulary that he has and just trying to like make some connections. And of course, like then I found in the literature that one of the places where deaf, um, sort of where, where ASL has been used in classrooms is in elementary schools where they've taught kids some, you know, some basic words and finger spelling, and they show that um, kindergarten kids end up becoming um, much better spellers. They, they, they have these gains. So that's something that had actually been studied, and I sort of also saw it. Yeah. 
So does anybody know like this this capital D capital D def versus lowercase def? No, so when, when people talk about um, death with a capital D, they're talking about death culture, death culture. And so, um, you know, uh, this is an image here, right? It's not hearing loss, it's death gain, right? It's kind of like a death pride thing. Because if you never had, yeah, death pride. If you never had hearing, then you would be sort of offended if someone was like, oh, you have hearing loss, right? And then this professor was joking to me like, I never had it, what did I lose? He always says, like, you have the hearing problem because, like, he'll be teaching his um, sign language students in class and the door will be open and there'll be some commotion and people will say, like, oh, uh, professor, can we shut the door? And he's like, see, you have the hearing problem, right? <laughs> see, you, I didn't, I was fine, right? And so they say deaf gain, which is a really interesting concept because these are examples of deaf gain. So um, signing in baseball, you can read this article actually came about, um, there's an umpire who's in the Hall of Fame, and there's also a famous player, Def Demi Hewitt. Um, what else? The modem was invented by a physicist who was profoundly deaf. Um, the football huddle also came about um, by, uh, from deaf culture. So Gallaudet, which is a college you know, at DC, has a really like, good uh, football team. And um, they noticed at one point that the other like, players were jumping their calls. And, and so like one of the players said, hey, come here, get, get in the huddle. He's like, hey guys, I think someone on the team, uh, they're either reading our calls or they've got like a deaf mother or deaf brother or something because they're reading our calls. So from now on, let's have a huddle. And that's actually the true story about like where the, the huddle came from. Um, yeah. Uh, deaf, uh, the language also evolves, which is kind of interesting. Like deaf culture, um, you know, one day I was looking up this word. <laughs> I was, uh, let's see, is this? Yeah, here we go. I was like, okay, today is the day when Jay needs to understand like what it means to be polite. You know, I want to teach this boy some manners. And I looked up the word fancy, and it was like, okay, a five um, on your chest with contact, and then like like some a Alexis Winstanley. Some waving, like it talks Please about like, this wiggle. And I was like, Alexis I know Winstanley. this word. That's and not fancy. Today, Today, that's cool. I was actually showing some people at PCC how to use um, skies. And I was like, a couple of the students, many of the students were blind or had severe sight loss, and some of the students were deaf. And, uh, and so I was like, oh, this is great. Like, I can try to like, sign while I'm talking, you know? And I was like, and, and at one point we showed this feature. I think we were showing them how, like, you know, oh, and then you can. Uh, you can come over here and just like, you know, add another branch. And like at the corner of my eye, I saw this like student and she was like, like that. And I was like, oh, hey, what does that sign mean? I don't know that sign. What's that sign? Like you did something like this. And they're like, oh, that means cool. And I was like, oh, I thought this was cool. And they're like, yeah, I mean, that's cool. But that's kind of like an old way to say cool. Oh, it's so cool. Like nowadays kids are like, it's not cool. yeah, it's, yeah, it's not yeah, cool. yeah. <laughs> yeah, now it's not cool. You know, like, today it's like, you know, this, right? So like it's, it's neat, like one of them, um, you know, so this is actually, um, where the sign came from was like people did this and it was sort of indicative of like a fancy collar. Oh, it's fancy and proper and polite, you know, and, and now it's kind of like, you know, whatever. You do it your own way. Like, I like to see like people that are real, real deaf people and the way they do cool. I'm like, oh, that's cool. How would you say not cool? Oh, not cool. Yeah, so, so this is a good one to know, not. So this is like a, a negator. So if you're like, yeah, not, not cool. But then here's a cool thing that I'll talk about later. Is that, um, is that a lot of times the way the grammar works is like this is want, like I want something, right? But if you don't want it, right, you don't want it. Yeah? Um, <clears throat> who wants to ask? You know how you say you taught a class that had white students and deaf yeah. So, um, um, sign language is for normally used for, blind, for deaf people, but if you are blind, don't you use Morse code or Braille? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so this was a place where we were just showing off the technology, this technology, to just a, a, a club, access technology club. And yeah, so um, yeah, so people that are blind use Braille um, to read. Um, they can hear just fine. And people that are deaf and blind use a form of manual sign language where they actually, you know, like take their hand and they'll be like, oh, they'll be like, yeah, yeah, oh no, you know. And then and then if they're telling them something, they're like, oh yeah, my name is Jane. You know, I'm actually spelling the hand. 
And that's how Helen Keller it's went so to. Cool. That's I so cool, that, right? right? Yeah, yeah Helen nice. Keller. Yeah. Um, she went to Harvard, um, right? And I remember I, I read her. I read her book actually when I was checking that book out from the Caltech Library. I came across it and I was like, oh my God, here's Helen Keller's book, and I opened it up, and it said in the front cover to Alexander Graham Bell, I dedicate the story of my life. And I was like, I couldn't <laughs> believe it. Like, I met this deaf woman once, and I showed her to guys, and she said, it blew my mind. And I was like, wow, that's interesting. Your mind gets blown out the back, you know? Like, a lot of people go like this, you know? Like, and the ASL also has, like, mind bomb. That's also, like, an ASL. So, uh, that's cool, right? So, um, so, if you watch the series on Through Deaf Eyes, you'll learn about how uh, Alexander Graham Bell is absolutely, absolutely vilified, absolutely hated, disliked completely because of what he did to the sign language community back in the day. He thought voicing was the superior method. You know, like this sign language, it must just be some, some lesser form of English where you're kind of acting things out, you know, like let's just get rid of this. They fired all the deaf teachers and they called it like the Dark Ages in, in that period of time in American Sign Language. Really, really bad really bad time. And so and that like blew my mind. Like, okay, I hated this guy and now Helen Keller is devoting her book to him. Like, I better read this book. Like maybe I need to kind of remember, you know, there's a time and a place, you know, these people lived and he didn't know everything and didn't realize how much bad, you know, sort of harm he was doing. Um, but yeah, Helen Keller, when she went to Harvard, she had Annie, her teacher, was like, you know, um, you know, in her hand, telling her about the lectures. And what I thought was really interesting when I read her book was she said, you know, at Harvard, I don't think I was really that bad off, even though, like, um, you know, in class I had to have um, Annie, I couldn't hear the lectures directly, like Annie had to translate them. She's like, because all the other women were, like, taking notes. And she's like, how much can you really, like, you know, concentrate? How much can you focus when you're, like, taking notes? So she didn't really think, like, she was, like, that worse off, yeah? But this also brings up the question, how do blind people take tests? Yeah, yeah, and, and, that, and that's the thing, like, I was wondering, did she really go to, uh, th and this is a little bit kind of like, but, like, um, <laughs> but, like, um, they made it really hard for her. Like, they had Braille tests, and she had to take tests, and she had to take math, and she had to use a Brailler, which is a, a way to type. And I recently learned how to read Braille and, so that I could read before I go to sleep. So if you guys have other questions about that, I can come back and talk more about it and bring, bring that book. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm reading The Old Man of the Sea. It's very slow, very slow, long time. Don't tell me if you know. I'm just, he's getting pulled by the fish right now. So, um, so uh, this was a question that one of my uh, people I worked for uh, asked him. He's the professor who's developing SI5S, the form of writing. So she was asking him um, about how to say cool. You know, so she's, like she, all different facial expressions. Different facial expressions. This is how you say facial expressions. And facial expressions are really important in sign language. I remember the first time he came, I sent him a glide. Glide is a form of uh, text messaging that you can send. And, uh, and I was like, I, I recorded it. A glide is a form of like text messaging that you can send, like kind of FaceTime videos. And so like, I sent him a glide. And they actually have like, this means glide, like in ASL. Like, I send you a glide or I received your glide. And I remember I sent him a glide and uh, I was like, thank you for coming here, it was great. And then I remember like his glide back, he's like, he's like, hey, good job, one thing, facial expressions. And I, like, I remember going to my friend and I was like, what, what does this mean? She's like, oh yeah, facial expression. You notice how you were like not, it'd be like, hey, it's nice to meet you, it's really awesome, I agree and I'll see you later. You know, like we would talk like that. And so I appreciate like now I've actually been complimented by um, ASL teachers about my facial expressions. And I think it helps me. It helps me when I'm like teaching like in class, you know, I'll be like not really into it, I'll just like start using sign language and then I'll naturally start using my facial expressions and then everyone wakes up. Um, uh, any other questions? Don't be shy. Yeah, don't, don't be shy. I learned shy because like recently my son is like, he's been telling me like, I'm kind of shy dad. I'm like, you're kind of funny. You're just like pretending. Uh, it is like pretending that you're shy. And sometimes you notice, like, I might use, you know, like, I might use one sign um, for different words. And sometimes that just is kind of like, depends on the context or my facial expression. You know, when I taught my son 
you know, I said, oh, Jay, oh, that's good. Oh, don't do that. That's bad, you know. And then I was like, hmm, well, now he knows good and he knows bad. Like, why should I just keep saying good and bad? I would be like, oh, yeah, Jay, that's great. And he's like, that's fantastic. And then he'd be like, oh, Jay, that is horrible. You know, and I was like, this is cool because I'm like helping him like learn synonyms, right? He sees the visual cue and knows, oh, this is good. Um, great must mean something kind of like good, you know. So that's that's how I was trying to help him, um, yeah, to build really big like vocabulary. Um, so anyway, I thought it was cool when I first learned that you know I would I would use sign language at the same time, and I was like, oh, this is this is actually called bimodal. It's called bimodal, and so people that can you know ASL are bilingual because it's a real language, but they're also bimodal because you use a different, a different mode. You don't use your voice, you use your <laughs> hands. Um, and so I put a link here, which is, a, I love now, now I'm like really like studying, I'm like studying the literature, like these like journals, like I'm reading, like I've never read so much um, literature before to try to really like understand like what um, we know about the benefits that hearing people could have from learning sign language. And so this paper actually talks about a study they did in Italy, so they're using uh, ISL or SIL, Italian Sign Language, and they learned about how um, they compared um, little kids in like the first and second grade, something around there, that could choose either like a music class or uh, an English class or maybe like an, an art class, and then they tested them, and they knew about the benefits that you get from... Um, sign language, and they were wondering, is it just because you're um, bilingual, you know, you're learning two languages? And so they compared them, the kids that decided to take the ASL class to the ones that took the English class, and they found certain cognitive benefits when they tried to test, um, you know, things other than just spelling and vocabulary, but also spatial reasoning. They found benefits from the kids that had learned sign language. So it's kind of interesting. There are these pathways that you're stimulating when you use you know, your body that might be benefiting your brain in all sorts of ways. Yep? Um, I know you said you taught your son from um, right away sign language. Uh -huh. How would you um, recommend the best way um, to um, start it with kids who are a little older, but not, I mean, it's different learning it now, but. Yeah, like I think kids are like really observant. They just like suck it up. So I think just start like using like vocabulary words like, you know, things like numbers, colors, um, articles of clothing, you know, your shoes, your socks, you know, your fruits, you know, orange. And, uh, and then it, the, I, I think, um, you know, I, I had this one about colors because um, the thing is, like, the way they do colors is like B for blue, you know, you kind of wave it, blue, yellow, green. Um, black and white are done a little bit differently. And then when is this class over? Like, are we already past time? No, no, okay. the bell will ring and then they'll start to move in a few, like three minutes. Three minutes, okay. Uh, um, but they don't have to be in the next class. Okay, so we'll okay. I'll try to be fast. I'll try to be fast. I'll try to be fast. Um, but um, yeah, so that's what I think. Like, and, and I would think like fingerspell. Like, learn, like kids like are really like, they get really proud when they can learn how to like fingerspell. And then once they know how to fingerspell, then you can be like kind of a code. They're like, hey, you know, you know, like, then it tells you, like, candy. Oh, okay, yeah, oh yeah, just, just wait. Oh, just my wait. friend started. Just wait a second. Okay. Yeah, wait, wait. So I use that a lot. I'm like, right, wait, guys, wait one second. Um, so I was in a class with some elementary kids, and um, they were asking, oh, how do you say, how do you say, how do you say black? And uh, I was, it was back in my, my old school in uh, Tennessee, and it's, it's, it was like maybe like uh, 70 to 80 percent like African American, and it's so like one of the kids. Oh, I say black, and I was like, oh, black. And he's like, yeah. Like, and then this this one girl is like, she's like, how do you say brown? And I was like, oh well, like B is for blue, so brown has to be slightly different. So you actually do this for brown, and it was so cute. She like turned to her friend. She goes, yeah. <laughs> and there was so much body language, and there's actually like. Like in culturally, like different, you know, cultures sign differently. You learn a little bit African American sign language if you, if you watch that, if you watch that video. And then just like basic words, like you know, this sort of thing, you know, please, thank you, sorry, stuff like that. I think that's a way to just start like helping, you know, some kids learn sign language. 
um, my friend who uses it over at one of the elementary schools in Pasadena. Um, so P for purple, but since we live in Pasadena, we say P for Pasadena. I learned that in Maine, like someone, he's from Portland, he's like, oh yeah, I'm from like Portland, they're like, you're from purple. He's like, oh no, like I'm from Portland. Like, oh, okay, get it. Um, but like, uh, so she was learning some ASL from her friends, and, uh, and she, uh, she was teaching the kids in elementary school, fifth graders, fifth graders, okay, she's like, oh yeah, so this is how you say boy, and this is how you say girl, and this is how you say please, and one of the girls like, it's like, Miss Boothby, do you realize what you just taught us? And she's like, oh. No, what did I just teach you? So she goes, girl, please. <laughs> and I was like, so kids, kids love it. They just like naturally. Like, yeah. Um, and like maybe like one other thing I wanted to say about like grammar is just like the way you inflect things. Because like, you know, you, we were talking about I don't, you know, don't something or, you know, sort of negating something. Um, but you can inflect verbs. So like this means help, like to help something, right? You kind of, you know, help. You looked it up, right? And so like, if, if you want help, right, you're like, can you help me? You know, if I'm like, I want to give you help, or if I'm like, can you help her? You know, so you can like, kind of like, give it direction like that. It's the same thing, like, teach. And if you want to talk about a person, like a, this is science, which I think comes from like, imagining you're pushing, you're pouring like, some bottles and some cauldron, you know, so it's like, it's like this, you know. So this is like, science person is a scientist, right? A teaching person is a teacher. But, so you can say like, teach you, Versus like teach me, so I was taught versus teach. And same thing, want versus don't want. Um, and, oh yeah, like I understand versus like I don't understand, right? It's good versus it's bad. You like turn it around, you turn it around. Like I like it, I don't like it. Um, oh, it tastes good. Well, it tastes bad. Um, anyway, okay, yeah. And then oh yeah, and the other thing was like the the time. I just wanted to like kind of let you imagine yourself like this is the future and this is the past. So you're like I will. You know, you can, like I will, like tomorrow versus like yesterday, like a long time ago before. So it's kind of interesting how the you know, tenses work that way. Anyway, thanks so much. That's all I have. Um, and you would say time, like in the structure, in what sentence structure, you would say time before you go subject to verb, right? Or what do you mean? Maybe, but that, that's actually part of the syntax. Time. Yeah, yeah. I, so, so you may have read that, that the time is the first thing that gets designated. Yeah, that would make sense, I think, because you have to kind of orient the listener. And sometimes you use like use use body and like body shifts too. You're like, oh yeah, like I was, uh, you know, uh, we were talking, you know, and like and you blah blah blah, and then you like stand over here, and you, when you do that, you're taking the role of the person. You're like, oh, what are you doing? And so I was like, oh, then you know, and so you kind of like do these body shifts, which is really interesting. So. Um, yeah, so it's a very, very interesting language. Yeah, very interesting language. Um, and it, it is totally different. So next time, you know, next time you meet a deaf person, you know, you should say, hey, you know, my name is, you know, James. Also, I learned that once you learn how to, like, spell your name, like, you can, like, spell your name, like, pretty fast, but people will try to meet you. So, like, like the same speed. So I like went to this like this deaf party, you know, I was like, hey, nice to meet you, my name is James. And he was like, oh yeah, my name is Brrrr. And I was like, whoa, hold on. Slow down one more time. Can you do that again? Can you do that again? Yeah, okay. And then they were like, well, maybe maybe you should like spell it like, like this. And then I know that I should also, you know, spell it. You know. <laughs> Yeah, I'll 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 I'll, 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 I'll I'll post it because like I found I found um, there was there was a link that I found for like uh, like BSL and like Scottish sign language and they seem to have like they had like lots of like technical math and whatever words and, and so that might be fun to like learn that I kind of wonder like will you know ASL grow you know will I start to incorporate more of these like technical words like you know I wonder because like nowadays we have selfie. You know, yeah. like that's a, that's ASL, right? I love you. Like, you know, that that's so maybe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs>